From creating bar charts using custom icons like this, to data bars that change colors when values go negative, in this video, we're going over how to make these five awesome Excel visuals to impress your manager. Let's get into it. First up, we have this table that has the profit column and you can see sometimes the values are negative and other times they're positive. So we want a visual that can accommodate for that. And by the way, you can download this Excel file for free in the video description to follow along. I'm going to press Ctrl A to select the whole area head over to insert and I'm going to choose under these column charts a 2D column which is fairly basic. You'll notice right now though that it looks a bit ugly because these bars are so slim. So I'm going to right click on them and go to format data series. The gap width is basically the distance between the columns. So that's the one that we want to reduce to something like 55%. That's looking a fair bit better. And then for the values that are negative like these down over here, we want to change the colors to something like a red that obviously implies more negative things. You can go one by one, so I can like try to click on one here. Like I say, I click on this particular column, change the color. But obviously, if the value then changes later on, it's not going to update. So that's not a great solution. Instead, try to select all of them like this. And once you have them selected, head over to the bucket area as the fill. We're going to choose a solid fill. And then we want this invert if negative. That's the key here. Tick on that. And you'll notice that these turn white. And down below, we actually have two color icons. One for when they're positive and the other one when they're negative. We can say I want that to be a red color. So far, so good. And if I go ahead and change the value over here to minus 2000 instead, you'll notice that as soon as it goes negative, it changes color to a red. It's really that simple to make this visual and you might be wondering why don't you just fill in the years like 2023 all the way to the bottom here and the reason is because you can see right now how it's extremely crowded instead if you just have it once for the whole area it centers it quite nicely like this next up we'll go over how to make these awesome line charts that have markers on the lines and they also have that nice gradient that goes from light to dark so here's the data for it. First, we'll do it for the sales and then for the refunds later on. But the key thing here is to duplicate this whole column. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it over here to the side. One will be for the line and the other one for the actual fill area. Now we can select the whole area with Control A, go over to insert. And first, I'm just going to choose a line with markers, something like this over here. Click on that and you'll notice it looks like we only have one line, but it's just overlapping because we have the exact same data in these two columns. So what we want to do is click on any one of them and go to change chart type. This one, instead of being the line with markers, we're going to make it the area. Click on that and press on OK. Awesome. Now you can see the general structure is looking a bit better. I'm going to right click format data series and this is to now change the fill color. Instead of a solid, we're going for a gradient fill. And the important thing to know here are these gradient stops. So these are all the colors that you're going to add and the stops are where exactly you want them within the image. So let's say for this top one, instead of white, I want it to go all the way to a dark blue color. And then the very last one should go to a white color. Now for these middle ones, we can remove some of them. So I can just press on this X. And for this one, I can center it a bit better like that. Now it's looking a lot more like what I had envisioned before. For the markers up top, you'll notice that right now they're rounded, but maybe we want to make some changes there. So I'm going to go right click for my data series again. And this time, instead of a line, we're looking at the marker itself. This is going to be under marker options and we want a type here to be different. So I'm going to go for built in and choose a square one. For instance, you can see that looks slightly different want to make sure the color of it is in this dark blue too. Awesome. Now for the line itself, you just want to click on this line area instead, choose a solid color and let's say I go for the same dark blue and here's the finished result. Awesome. Before we move on to the next visual, if you aspire to become a data analyst, you should check out the Meta Data Analyst Professional Certificate on Coursera. It's designed to teach you job ready skills for data analytics roles so you learn the essential skills in just five months. The program has over 48,000 students and a rating of 4.7 stars. 
It's structured as a five course series and you learn key analytical skills such as data visualization, data analysis, or statistics with tools like Tableau, SQL, or Google Sheets. And no, you don't need any prior experience to get started and it's completely self-paced. Upon completion, you'll receive a Meta Professional Certification, which you'll be able to share on your resume or LinkedIn. So if you're interested, sign up for a 7-day free trial using the link in the description below and get started today. And thanks to Coursera for sponsoring this video. We've looked at the sales and for the refunds, the idea is very much the same, but instead of blue, it's in red. So moving up to number three, and here we have some bar charts, but using custom icons. Let me show you how to do that. It makes sense for something like the employee headcount. Let me just select the data here and go over to insert. I'm gonna choose a 2D bar chart like this. So far, nothing special. And what we need to do as the main difference is head over to insert under icons. And here we're gonna look for something like a human or a man. Let me go for man here. And I'm gonna choose both the one with a fill and the one without the fill. Press on insert to add the two. Let me change the colors here to what I would like. Maybe it's something like this one where it's in a blue color. Now I'm gonna go inside the chart for the first part, the orange one, which is the 2025. I'm gonna go over to format data series. Under the bucket here, I'm gonna choose a picture or text fill. Right now it's gonna look kind of weird but you'll see this clipboard part is deselected. So that's the one that we're gonna be able to activate when I press on Control C to copy this icon. Now, when I go back inside of the bar, you'll notice here I have the clipboard activated. So that's the one I wanna click on. It looks terrible right now, and that's because it's currently stretched. So let's switch that to a stack, and that's looking a lot better. For this lower part, I'm gonna go for the lighter colored one. So I'm gonna click on this part, Control C again to copy it, and here under the bucket, I'm gonna change that to a picture again and go for the clipboard one. And I want to stack it. Awesome, now we start to see the key differences here. We can also create data labels for this whole area. So right click, add data label, same thing with this side, right click, add data labels. You'll notice also down below as a series, we now have the icons, but ideally these should be a bit bigger. So what I'm gonna do is go over to this part right here with the three um, columns and change the gap width to something like 50. So nice, now they look a lot larger. For these down below, you'll notice it says series two and series one. So let's change that to actually have the year. That's easy to do by right clicking and going to select data. Series one represents 2024. So I'm just gonna click on edit there. And as the name, I'm gonna select the 2024 cell. For this other one, same thing and choose 2025. Hit OK there, hit OK again, and now that's looking nice and clean. Before we look at the navigation bar on the side, we have the radar chart, which makes sense to see what you're strong at and maybe what you're lacking in. We have an employee satisfaction survey and comparing the two separate years. So I'm gonna go over to insert again, and this one's slightly hidden. It's under this waterfall area. All the way to the bottom, we have the radar and we're gonna choose a filled one. Right now, this looks very wrong and I think it's because it's taking the years as an actual number. If I drag this down, that's slightly better, even though it still looks a bit ugly, so we need to make some changes. First, I'm just gonna select this area and because it's fully filled and not in a gradient or lower opacity, you can see that we can't actually see the background very well. So I'm gonna right click and go to format data series. Here under the bucket area, I'm gonna head over to the marker and as the fill, we wanna change from automatic to a solid fill. But the key thing is to have some transparency. Let me say I go for 60% transparency. Now we can see the background a bit better and let's change this other one to something like a red color. And the transparency, let me go for 60%. And I'm just gonna add some borders around them. So as the line, I'm gonna go for a solid line make it a fair bit thicker, like a two right now. And the same thing over on this side, I'm gonna go for a solid line, make it about a two and change that color to a red. Let me delete the legend for now and the title so we can see it a bit better. And now it's fairly visible. I'm not sure that this part adds much value. You can always delete that if you want. 
for differentiating the years, this is something that you can always just add in the title. So put 2024 in blue and 2025 in red. Finally, looking at the navigation bar and the background shape, this is actually surprisingly easy to do. For this first part, you can see that I already have a shape in here. And to create this, I just went over to insert shapes. I chose a rectangular one. And the key thing to make it look kind of sleek like this is to go to right click format shape and add the gradient stops. This is really what makes a big difference in my opinion. For this other one, for the navigation bar, that's just like adding any other shape, but I have changed the cornerings. And for that, to add this type of curvature, just wanna right click and go to edit points. You see right now, we only have these points as the options, but if you wanna add some more points, you can't just click on any part right click and go to add point that basically adds like an other element of flexibility if that's what you're looking for okay great so we've added the shapes but what about the actual navigation well for that we need to first add a few different icons under insert we can choose whichever icons we want let me just add some quickly awesome so you can see i've added these four icons over here right now though when i click on them they don't actually do anything so to make it have an action, like go to a specific sheet, we can just press Ctrl K. This opens up the hyperlink pop-up. As you can see, we can just add an email address. So whenever someone clicks on it, it's going to literally send an email to a specific person. That said, if we just want it for navigation purposes, we can say place in this document. And let's say that when they click on that, I just want them to go to the sales tab. So I can press OK. And also when I click over to this bank account, it's going to go over to the sales tab like that. You would just need to repeat the whole process for the other icons. And the very last step to putting it all together is adding another shape. So in this case, it would be like adding some white shapes in here as the background for all of the different charts that we have available. And to bring them in, you just need to go ahead and copy it and paste it inside of the actual dashboard like that. The key thing, though, is changing things like the background so it doesn't actually have a fill. So I would go for no fill for this and I would also go for no outline. Now it's just a completely transparent thing like that, that I can add inside of my shape. Awesome. And that's how you make advanced visuals in Excel. But if you want that navigation bar to be even more sleek, you should watch this video over here. And if you want to be up to date on the latest Excel features, you should watch this other video over here. Hit the like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.